So I totally forgot about this happening until my mom brought it up at dinner tonight. And now it's 9.30 at night and I'm scared all over again. This was back in high school, either my freshman or sophomore year. I missed the bus and I didn't have a car at the time, so my mom had to drive me to school. The road my tiny neighborhood was off of was a long rural stretch that only had one equally tiny other neighborhood and a few houses here and there. It was 6am or something and still dark outside and it was colder than a witch's tit. As we're pulling out of our neighborhood, my mom and I both saw these three children in blue and white private school uniforms, standing side by side, shoulder to shoulder at the entrance of the neighborhood on the sidewalk. It was either two girls and one boy, or two boys and one girl. I don't remember the ratio. But the girls wore a blue and white skirt dress outfit, and the boys wore a blue short sleeve shirt with khaki shorts. This was weird for a few reasons. One, it was 40 degrees outside. They looked like they were dressed for the summer, and they didn't even wear coats or anything. Secondly, there were two schools in the area, but not a private school till the next town over, and blue and white weren't the school's uniform colors. Third, what young kids just stand there in a single file line, not doing anything but standing? No joshing around, no nothing. Yeah, right. Lastly, this wasn't where the bus stop was, it was a few blocks down. Just a sprinkle of extra creepy on top for shits and giggles. There wasn't any street lights. They were just standing in the dark, not doing jack except being creepy as hell I guess. They were on the corner on the right, closest to the passenger side where I was obviously sitting. And of course, we were turning right. As we got closer I thought at first they didn't have faces, but it was just too shadowy and dark out, and the headlights only shone under their shoulders, which is how I can remember the outfits so vividly. Then we got closer and I was relieved to see they had faces, but then got completely freaked out all over again when I saw their eyes were all black. Like supernatural Sam and Dean fighting demons all black. My mom saw it before I did and she put the pedal to the metal and hightailed it out of there. I remember trying to look back and see them, but I couldn't since it was too dark. My mom didn't go back home till the sun rose and it was bright enough to not be scared. Of course, nobody believed me at school and my siblings thought we were full of it. But we know what we saw. We never saw them again after that though. I thought they were ghosts, but a few months after that I heard about black eyed children on YouTube or something and made the connection. We moved shortly after that due to unrelated reasons. This was 3-4 to years ago and I had blissfully forgotten about it until my mom said, Hey, remember when? And now I want to die. I hope my irrational anxieties and fear around children that are small enough for me to punt across a soccer field is amusing at least. So yesterday, my grandma was telling me a story from when she was in her 20s, which would have been in the 60s, and she went to a camping trail as a double date with her boyfriend and her friends. They were fishing at night and they parked their car up on a hill by the bank. But as they were fishing, they noticed the car lights came on inside the car. So they went up the hill and the car doors were open. They shut the doors and went back down to carry on with what they were doing, and it happened again. So my grandma's boyfriend at the time went back up the hill alone and shut the doors again to the car while the rest of them stayed put. I guess he wanted to wait for whoever was doing it. Eventually he came running back down the hill to my grandma and their friends hysterically saying, it had no face, it had no face, over and over again and he also mentioned that the thing ran unbelievably fast. They never reported it to anyone because they didn't think anyone would believe them. But I just wondered if anybody knows what it could be. I'd like to figure it out so I can tell her some more info on what it was. She didn't see the creature personally, but she said it was the scariest thing that's ever happened to her. So my story begins about a year ago. I was riding my bike home from work, and while riding through this residential neighborhood, I see this form standing in the middle of the road. As I get closer to where it's standing, it backs up even further, and this pattern keeps up for about a mile, until I pass a stoplight. After passing the stoplight, the figure or shape stood there in the direct middle of the road in front of me. Its body was made of shadows, but it had full form. Its eyes were a deep scarlet in color. This figure raised its head, 
opened its mouth to reveal rows of jagged teeth, but I couldn't make out any other features. I was frozen still for what felt like eons until I kicked my bike pedal and scratched my leg when I slipped. I was able to finally get away, but now this figure haunts me. I've seen it at least once to twice a week, and no one else sees it. I've spoken to many of my friends and they just think I'm losing my mind, but I know it's real. If anyone has had any experience with something like this, please let me know. This is the story of an encounter that lasted on and off for almost a decade, me and the Pale Man. This starts around when I was 13 years old. It's worth mentioning that I didn't have a very good home life, but I also wasn't very aware of this fact. I suspected that maybe families were sometimes just like that. Houses were always this messy and decrepit. Parents were always either insanely controlling and accusatory, or they weren't around at all. At this point in my life, I would have to take a bus to school. I would wake up very early to catch it, and it was almost always still dark outside when I walked to the bus stop. In the corner of my eye, there he would be, in my yard. A tall, gangly figure, he was maybe seven feet tall. Papery white skin, long arms, spindly and long fingers, humanoid shaped body that was very, very thin and bony, and he had no face to speak of. He gave me a very deep sense of dread whenever I caught a glimpse of him, but oddly enough, he would just stand at the corner of the yard. When I would try to look at him, he'd vanish. I thought maybe it was just my imagination. As time went on, he would appear in different places. When we moved, he would be at our new houses. I figured I brought him there, sometimes at night when everyone was asleep and the house was dark. In the pitch black living room, I could swear I saw him standing in the middle of the room or sitting on the couch. I avoided passing the living room at night altogether because of him. I was terrified of his presence. When I realized he probably wasn't going anywhere, I decided I should name him. I had an issue with personalizing things growing up. I would give objects names and personalities. It prevented me from wanting to throw things away and I still sometimes struggle with this. But in this instance, naming him was what I was using to be less scared of him. I named him the Pale Man. As my mental health declined and the emotional abuse I was facing became more apparent and rampant, he became more bold it seemed. Sometimes, when I would be in the shower, I would swear I could see him on the other side of the curtain. I would see it slowly move as if he were poking it. I would press my back against the wall of the shower and watch him, slowly scratch at the curtain. He never tried to open it. He never made noises. I could just see his familiar tall shadow from behind the curtain. He scared me, but I felt confident telling myself he wasn't dangerous. One of the houses he followed us to had a long, poorly lit hallway, so any time of day, if my door was open, I would see him walk past, quietly and quickly in the dark. It almost became comforting to have him there. My mother was rarely home and my brother didn't seem to notice him. It's like he was there to check up on me. I started to whisper into the dark living room at night, good night pale man, and I would see him slowly wave from the couch. Fast forward to now, I live with my girlfriend. I started seeing a therapist, though I haven't mentioned pale man. When I started taking medication and addressing issues and old traumas, he started to show up less and less. The last I saw of him, he was in the living room, standing. He was too tall for the room, so his head was a little bent forward. I waved at him. He waved back at me. I said to him, Good night, pale man. Thank you. He bowed his head a bit. I walked to my bed. He stayed there. In the morning, as always, he was not there. But then the following nights, he also hadn't shown. I was a bit sad to have him leave, but I'm sure it's for the better. I like to think he moved on to better things. I know I sure did. I'm a 45-year-old Belgian guy, but my origins are 100% Moroccan. Although I always lived in Belgium, I used to spend most of my summer holidays in Morocco as a child while my mother remained in Belgium for work. At that time, my relatives in Morocco were farmers. They lived in the countryside about 40 kilometers from Tangier, 
a very remote and poor place with no access to electricity or even roads that weren't made of dirt. No lights, no radio, no TV, no toilets, no tap water, not anything. Kerosene lamps, wells, and cob ovens were still the norm. My grandfather was mowing hay while my grandmother was taking care of the cattle. They were helped by my uncles and aunts, who were late teenagers back then, in the early 80s. That was pretty much their occupation at that time of the year. It was either that, cleaning the farm, welling up the water, baking bread, cooking the evening meal, or praying God. No leisure whatsoever. Being the only child on the farm, I was either getting in everyone's way or bored to death as there wasn't much to do, really. They were way too busy trying to make ends meet for everyone, so even though they took really good care of me, there was no quality time I could expect from anyone. The neighbors had many children I could have played with, but my family was overprotective. As my mom wasn't around, they felt like their main mission was to keep me safe more than to keep me entertained. It was another place and another time. A kid well-fed and secure was the only concern, and considering their situation, it was an achievement on its own. Besides, and that's typically Moroccan, they were afraid of the evil eye, which is a curse believed to be cast by malevolent glares. Indeed, I was very noticeable. For whatever reason, and unlike my relatives, I had straight blonde hair, which is unusual but not rare at all in that region. Pale skin and my clothes were very western, made me look like a wealthy Scandinavian kid compared to the kids around. The country was so poor and out of time you wouldn't believe. There was something medieval to it at a social level, and Mesopotamian somehow for pretty much everything else. It could have very well been 4000 BC. Therefore, they basically hid me and kept me in a bubble the whole time I was there. So, all in all, I had nothing much to do on my own most of the time, and anything beyond the farm was pretty much off limits. Grandpa was too rough of a guy to hang out with. He didn't like kids, or he didn't like me. I couldn't tell. But there was one thing I loved to do though. Taking the cows to the pasture at dawn and bring them back at dusk with my grandma. It was her daily ordeal because each and every morning she desperately tried to sneak out while I was sleeping. But I knew better and almost never missed a day. However, the pastures were pretty far away from the farm and my grandma had to carry me on her back for long distances as I was half asleep most of the time. And the rest of it, I pretty much teased the cows way too much with sticks and she always had a hard time keeping the herd together because of me. But she never complained, God rest her soul. Once arrived at the pastures, I got to hook some of the cows to the ground to prevent them from escaping. Each cow had its own rope around its neck, and the other end was attached to a rough and fat metal spike. All I had to do was to find some stone around that would be large and dense enough to firmly peg those spikes to the ground. That alone was fun enough to make my days. But one of those days, I was seven years old at the time. We were at the pastures earlier than usual so much that the sun wasn't totally out yet. The place was more remote and the land more rugged than usual too. There were trees and big rocks all around and grandma put me in charge of finding a couple of stones in order for us to peg the spikes. But I couldn't find any around so I had to search a little. After a few minutes looking down for some, I realized that I couldn't see my grandma or the cows anymore, but I knew she couldn't be very far. And suddenly, behind some big rocks in front of me, I saw... a thing. It was definitely human-like. Sort of. It was looking at me, smiling. I just can't tell if its face was male or female. It was both and neither at the same time. It's not that I couldn't tell. It has more to do with the fact that the features of its face seem to be constantly redefining themselves. I remember clearly that it had pointy ears, and what scared the hell out of me, beyond its creepy smile, was its teeth. They were pointy too, and looked like tiny ivory knives. But that wasn't just it. It had small horns on the forehead, backward goat paws instead of legs, and freaking hooves instead of feet. Its hair was short, but it wasn't anything like human hair. It was something between a filthy fur and horse hair. It was awfully grotesque. Sketchy even, but definitely nightmarish. I was so scared that I peed my shorts instantly. I screamed my lungs out and I began to run hectically as I couldn't remember where I came from. But whatever my speed and whatever my direction, 
That thing kept on appearing at each and every corner. Behind a rock or a tree, totally still, as if it never moved and never had to catch up. And each time it appeared to me, its smile and its laughter kept growing, like it was feeding off of my fear. So much so that at the end, it was just hideous and totally inhuman. That mouth ended up filling up half of its face and the teeth wouldn't stop growing. I felt like I was trapped in a maze and it was over. Suddenly, I heard my grandma who had been alarmed by my screams and I ran towards her trying to explain what I saw. She remained calm and felt concerned, but I couldn't convince her to come and see what I saw as she said to me that there was nothing to be seen, that I was tired and probably imagining things because of the low light. I have no recollection of us coming back though, except that she was praying out loud on our way home and that I was sleeping or dozing on her back. I just remember being sick for three days at the farm afterwards. I stayed in bed as I was dizzy and vomiting making very weird dreams that totally fucked up my senses. It is hard to describe. The sense of touch, sight, and smell were all the same thing at once. I was confused and delirious. Something that I kept having for all my childhood at least twice a year since then and no doctor ever found out what it was, until it ended by itself when I became a teenager. Anyway, I recall that my family looked very worried while I was sick, more than they should have been and more than they've ever been even though they've seen me sick before. Remember that it was the remote countryside. Morocco is a land of superstitions, witchcraft, and traditions, especially back then. So healers were a thing. In fact, they were the only thing. Doctors weren't the first call back then. You were taken care of by the local healer who used potions made of plants, oil, spices, spit, animal feces, and other weird stuff that they made up while saying some Islamic incantations and writing some dark shit on amulets. We are famously known for these practices, unfortunately. The reason I say this is that I recall a name my family mentioned several times while I was in bed, which was something like Aisha Kandisha. To me, it felt like they were talking about a healer that they knew and would call to take care of me. It wasn't the first time, and indeed, that's what happened. A very old healer came by my bed to fix me. Eventually, a few days later, I felt better, and that was the end of that. When I talked about it to my relatives, they said that I was ill, that I had hallucinated, and that there was nothing to be worried about anymore. Since then, and up until now, that's all I could ever get from them. Except that I know what I saw, that it was real, and that I became ill after the events. Before that, I was just fine. The weirdest thing is that I know for sure that I will meet this thing again before I die. Why? I don't know, but it's a certainty. I just know. Will it be the very day I die? I don't know, but I will see it again. It's like this idea has been carved into my brain since that very day, but that's not it. A few years later, when I was about 12 years old, We visited a museum with my school in Belgium, and at some point, we happened to see a satire on a painting and it struck me because it was exactly what I saw five years earlier in the countryside. Except that what I saw was hermaphrodite, and way, way, way more evil. I know it's a Greek-Roman mythology, and that it's not even remotely related to Morocco, but that's what I saw anyway. And that was the first time I ever heard about ancient mythologies, so I couldn't have made that up five years earlier. However, I didn't investigate further because there was nothing to investigate, really. A satire in Morocco is too long of a stretch. It's definitely something that, at least, validated what I saw with my own eyes, but it remained a dead end. However, the part that is most disturbing though is that, not so long ago, about 10 years ago at most, I stumbled upon the word Aisha Kandicha online. No way I could have forgotten that name. I read about it and realized that my family hadn't actually been talking about the healer when they said that name back then. They referred to the Moroccan folklore. Indeed, Aisha Kandicha happens to actually be a mythological character. Half witch, half jinn, that seems to be part of the Moroccan culture, especially near Tangier, and it is documented as such. It is supposed to take the appearance of a woman in remote lands in order to seduce and kill men. The most interesting part is that she is described as having the legs of a hoofed animal such as a goat or camel. This blew my mind. 
I couldn't have made this shit up 38 years ago. I can totally understand that people, especially kids, can make some memories up, but it's hard to make up something that you heard about only 28 years later. To me, it's more than a satire or a witch. The fact that I got sick and confused chronically way later on and for years after makes me believe she is a succubus of some sort. I feel like she partially drained something out of me but couldn't complete her job entirely, and I know she will eventually find me and finish whatever she started. The strangest thing is that I am a rational guy, to my bones. I don't believe in gods or superstitions or ghosts or anything like that. But I saw what I saw, and I can tell the difference between a hallucination and an actual encounter. It's been decades and I haven't gone back to Morocco and I would lie if I said it's not partially because of that, but I know I will go back sooner or later. I have unfinished family business there that will have to be eventually taken care of.